Hello, welcome to the Grip Guardians Expo video. The Robbins Air Force Base, responsible for the depot level maintenance and inspection of F-15 fighter jets, has asked us to streamline the anti-skid checkout procedure by creating new test equipment. The anti-skid system prevents the aircraft's left and right wheels from locking during landing. The checkout has three tasks, verifying correct pressure applied to each brake, verifying the system response when faced with an electric short and ground, and verifying the release of brake pressure on a simulated skidding tire until it resumes rolling. The skid box is an analog computer in the plane that releases the brake pressure while the wheel hub generator produces sinusoidal signals to be interpreted by the skid box as the wheels ro rotate. The existing procedure requires three technicians, four hours to complete, an arduous process that takes up too much time and money. The Air Force has asked the Grip Guardians, comprised of Diego Garcia, Shannon McGrain, Rahul Pradeep, Matthew Simpson, Patrick Wishard, and Nathan Worku to help. Our mission is to design a new piece of testing equipment that reduces the required personnel and time to complete the tasks. The design process for this problem began with identifying the customer's needs. These are to complete the tasks of the anti-skid checkout procedure using aircraft power with less people and quicker than uh, the previous procedure. The stakeholder analysis shows the groups of people interested in and how involved they are. Using specifications and needs set by the customers, a house of quality was created to help understand what objectives to target. This was then converted to a function tree with the idea of having to find a solution for each objective at the bottom of the function tree. These solutions are then presented in a morphological chart. The morph chart presents multiple ideas for solution with the intent of combining these solutions to provide the best product overall. Each concept was a combination of ideas provided by the team and were then evalu evaluated using an evaluation matrix. As one can see, the outright winner was the bird box, being extremely close, in our opinion, to the ideal concept. For this concept, hypotheses were created in order to conduct the engineering analysis of the product. These tests were conducted by attaching a pressure transducer with a T-fitting to a brake bleed kit, and a DC motor was attached to the wheel. The new product was predicted to save over 60% in time, as well as 50% in personnel. The accuracy in pressure, uh, pressure measured was expected to increase by a magnitude of 10, and the accuracy in motor control was also expected to increase. Adapting the bird box concept, we began outlining what three main tasks had to be accomplished and to determine how we could assemble the controller. The first task we are designing for is how to spin and regulate the speed of each tire, while also being able to vary the speed to simulate a skid. This is accomplished by two potentiometers that are varying the resistance, thus changing the voltage being sent to the motor. The second task is to be able to digitally monitor the brake pressure from the cockpit. We're using a pressure transducer that we calibrated to be able to sense the force applied and converted the voltage readings into PSI on the controller. The last task is simulating open and short circuit faults for the right and left wheels and the skid control box. The first design, known as Thor's hammer, was the first iteration of the controller, where we modeled it off the existing handheld devices that utilize buttons and switches. This design was hard to hold due to balance issues, leading us to the Game Boy, which is a two-handed device but would allow for a comfortable handheld, handheld feel. We discovered issues with thermal properties of the 3D uh, printed filament, and ultimately decided not to reinvent the wheel and retrofitted a Pelican case, as this design not only is more weatherproof, but also allows for the screen to be inside the case, further protecting it. One major aspect of the project has been working with the Raspberry Pi and creating the user interface that interfaces and controls the individual tasks. This also is iterative, as initially we were planning on making this a touchscreen interactive screen, but ultimately to make this more robust and easier for technicians to use anywhere, we are now only using the screen to display the readings from the motor and pressure transducer. Working with the electronics lab, we were able to create our own printed circuit board, which is a more efficient and condensed version of the breadboard wiring that was created, as there are four different circuits being used inside the case. Having to utilize power from the aircraft, we wired our own cannon plug, which is a typical connection used in the aircraft, and have created our own wiring schematic and connects the plane to the controller. As you can see in this image, our solution allows for an immediate drop of personnel, as technicians 2 and 3 are no longer required to work on the aircraft, as the DC motor replaces these two technicians, and the fourth that reads the brake pressure is now only needed as a part-time tech, dropping from the four technicians to one in the cockpit, with a part-time technician required to reset the faults that are being tested in the skid box. 
With prototyping and testing completed, engineering analyses could take place. This plot shows the transducer calibration, and as one can see, there is a clear correlation between voltage and pressure, indicating that calibration has taken place. The measurements also show that the pressure values were within 7.5 psi of the required 3000 psi. This has a percentage error of 0.25%, which is much better than the 3.33% that was occurring in the original procedure. Moving on to the motor RPM analysis, accuracy improved drastically as the technicians were previously measuring the speed of rotation based on sound levels, and this gets solved immediately. In terms of the procedure overall, the time was decreased by 63%, well above predicted, and around 50% for the personnel, causing an overall 75% saving in money estimated for the Air Force in this procedure, an extremely successful endeavor. Moving forward, the Air Force will be providing an extensive fabrication package along with the product, including parts, specs, as well as an operations and maintenance manual, with the intent to produce more of these for this procedure, which has successfully achieved the mission objective.